Hey everyone, Natasha here from Bright Sprout Consulting. This week we celebrated International Women's Day and it felt fitting for me to identify a few women that I believe have made an impact to our country and are just inspirational to me. If you haven't already, check out my two videos that I've done on Major Mandisa Mfeka and Tando Hopa. They are truly phenomenal women and deserve to be celebrated. Today though, I want to chat about another fabulous South African female who has made quite a big impact. Nsiki Biela. Have you heard of her? For those of you that don't know who Nsiki is, today you're in for a treat because you're going to learn all about the first South African female winemaker. I know, right? My favorite kind of farmer. Nsiki grew up in a small town in KwaZulu-Natal called Mashabatini and she graduated from high school in 1996. At the time, she would have loved to have studied further and she wanted to study chemical engineering, but she couldn't afford to. So she worked as a domestic worker for the year after high school, just to make some money and decide on her next steps. She applied many places for a bursary or a scholarship to study chemical engineering, but unfortunately she wasn't successful because in hindsight, that wasn't the path for her. After many failed attempts at trying to get a bursary or a scholarship to study chemical engineering, she was finally offered a chance to study at Stellenbosch University. The only caveat was that she would have to study viticulture and enology, I think that's how you say it, basically winemaking. Wasn't what she wanted, but she knew that these opportunities don't come around often, so she felt she had no choice but to grab it with both hands. And that's what she did. So, off she went, on a bus, across the country, to a place where she didn't know a soul, and she wasn't really familiar with the language that they spoke, because in Stellenbosch, they speak mostly Afrikaans, and at the university, all lectures are in Afrikaans. Despite that, off she went. Oh, and did I mention that prior to actually studying winemaking, Itsiki has never actually had any wine. Wild, right? Despite all of those obvious challenges, she finished her Bachelor of Science degree in agriculture. And Shortly after that, she was given an opportunity to work at a boutique winery called Stella Reka, I think. Stella Kaya. Stella Kaya. <laughs> Stella Kaya. She got to work at Stella Kaya. It was small enough that she could work closely with the winemaker. And she got to learn about how to run a winery. So what makes Sinsiki's journey so special, you ask? Well, you've got to consider where she's come from. She's somebody that's come from humble beginnings and took every opportunity she was given and made a success out of it. How many opportunities have you been given that you've squandered? She didn't do that. It's amazing. The truly remarkable thing about Nsiki's story is that she never squandered any opportunities that were given to her. She was given a bursary, it wasn't what she wanted initially, but she took it. She ran with it, she did well. She was given an opportunity to work at a wine farm to learn from the winemaker and look what she did. She created her own winery, using the things that she learnt where she was. That for me is remarkable because I don't know that I've used every opportunity that's been given to me. She's someone to look up to. That's it. We've come to the end of our video today. 
and the end of the series this week. Hopefully you've learned something new about the three phenomenal women that I shared with you. They're amazing. Join me next week where I continue the conversation around human rights and what that means for us.